QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021 Accounts Receivable Aging Reports. Let's get into it with Intuit's QuickBooks Pro Desktop 2021. Here we are in our Get Great Guitars practice file. We currently have the open windows open. You can open the open windows by going to the view drop down, selecting the open windows list. We're now going to be taking a look at reports that aren't one of the three major financial statement reports, balance sheet, income statement, or statement of cash flows. And when we think about all other reports, in essence, we want to tie them out to some line item, giving us more detail, more information as some line item on the major financial statement reports of balance sheet and income statement primarily. So let's take a look at those reports first. We're going to first look at the balance sheet report. Going to the reports drop down, company and financial. I'm going to go on down to the balance sheet standard report. Then we're going to change the date. I want to change it in the customized area up top so we can have a beginning date range so we can use the zoom feature. So I'm going to change it from 010121 to 022821. So that's going to be January through February 28th. We're going to go ahead and say OK. There is our balance sheet report. We're concentrating now on the accounts receivable. Accounts receivable representing money that is owed to us. It's owed to us because we made sales on account. In other words, we used the form of, if we go back to the open windows homepage, the invoice. The invoice increase in the accounts receivable and the other side going to sales. We then expect to receive payment in the future. Back to the balance sheet. We can see that more clearly if we double click on the accounts receivable looking at the transaction detail we'll see only a couple forms affecting the accounts receivable unlike something like a cash account and that means that uh, the cash account ha is the only account that has a whole lot of different forms in it most other accounts only have a few forms affecting them this one affected by the invoices increasing them payments then payments to us from customers decreasing them that's what we expect to happen on the accounts receivable we bill people for work that has been done they pay us accounts receivable goes then back down closing this back out if we think about the accounts receivable and we ask questions about it we're going to say okay how much do people owe us Fourteen thousand one seventy two. that's great i'd rather have the money though when are they going to pay us and who owes us that money? That's going to be the next question. Then and then, how can we collect on that? Have you? Can we call those people and ask them to like give us the money like now, so that we can move it up from the accounts receivable to the check it account? And so to do that, we need a subsidiary report. Subsidiary report. So let's go to the reports drop down. We can find these by going to the uh, customers and receivables. These are basically the accounts that are supporting, in essence, the receivable and or sales line items. Let's find it in the report center now. Go into the reports and then go to the report center. Going to maximize the report center here. We're then going to go into the standard tab. We want to look at the customers and receivables. These two reports are our primary two reports. So let's take a look at the first one, which is the AR aging report. If I'm going to run that report... I'm going to run it for, for the time period, and we could do the same kind of thing with customize the range, but it is as of a point in time report, therefore one date. That's going to be 022821. And the bottom line of this report, the 14172, then should match what's on the balance sheet because it is supporting a line item on the balance sheet. So you always want to kind of tie that out. Any other report that you have, you should be able to say, how does this tie out to the balance sheet and or the income statement? That's how this report does. Back to the accounts receivable, aging. This breaks us out by how overdue the invoices are. So these are invoices that have not yet been paid, broken out not only by customer, these are the customers that have not yet paid these invoices, but also breaking it out by those items that are past due and how old or how past the due they are. Therefore, that's why we have the payment terms on the invoice. So if we say something is due in net 30 or within 30 days, if it has not yet been paid within 30 days, that's kind of okay. We'd still like to get it sooner. Like we should still call these people and try to collect. But that's not too bad. If it's past that point, 1 to 30, that's overdue. We're starting to get worried because it's the longer it's overdue, the less likely we are to get paid. And then if it's past that time period, we get more and more kind of worried. And we start calling more frantically these people <clears throat> and seeing if we can get our money. So then if we double click on this item, of course, these are going to be put together. Mostly this one's done with a journal entry. Of course, I picked the one with a journal entry. But if we double click on most of these, they're going to be invoices that created these items. So that's going to be our standard report. Now we might want a more detailed report. So to find a more detailed report, we can go to the report center and we can go to the accounts receivable detail report. 
So the accounts receivable aging, AR accounts receivable aging detail report. Let's run that one and check it out for 022821 and similar kind of information, but now it has the detail for the, for the current items. Now this is not broken out by customer, as you can see, it's broken out by the current items and the past due items so that we can drill down on the invoices that constitute them. That would probably be most useful when we're drilling down on those items that are past due so that we can focus in on those, those particular invoices and then we can drill down uh, on the invoices. We do have the names of them here, but it's not broken out and grouped by customer name. So we're probably looking at the past due amounts in a report such as this. Closing this back out, uh, scrolling back down, we have an accounts receivable graph. We'll take a look at the accounts receivable graph later. Open invoices is, is another report that's basically going to show those invoices that have not yet been paid. So this, so this is another way we can see basically it by, by open invoices. I'm going to make this as 022821. And so now we have our invoices, customers, and then basically those open in invoices per customer here. Notice we're a little bit off on uh, the total down here. We have then, if I go to this total, we're at the 13773 minus, if I go back to the balance sheet, it should tie out to that 14. It's off by one, let's say 14172. It's off by the 399. And if I go to uh, the detail, let's take a look at the detail in here and say, well, why would that be? 399 it's because we had an adjusting journal entry so this adjusting journal entry is something that we put in at the end of the period in order to make the financials correct but it's not actually an invoice and therefore not an open invoice so that's an adjusting entry that's kind of throwing things off a little bit but we know what it is and we'll talk we'll see that adjusting entry and why we're making it when we do the data input at the end of the process uh, we'll get to that adjusting entry so uh, let's go back to the report center again so we've got the open invoices collection reports average days uh, to pay summary so that's going to give us kind of our, our average basically turnover type of report and the average days uh, to pay here we can also search by basically instead of having an aging report the customer balance summary report let's take a look at that one run that report and we are, I'm going to change the date from 010121 to uh, 123121. And so we have a similar kind of thing we had with the aging, but it's not breaking out past due or how old the items are. We're at the 13872, uh, 13872, and then the balance sheet is at that 14172. So once again, it's, it's off by that, uh, by that difference, by that, that uh, 399, which is the adjusting journal entry as well. So that's the customer balance detail report actually this one's off by something that's a little a, a different adjusting entry so we have the 13872 minus if i go to the balance sheet we have minus the 14172 it's off by 300 and if i go back to the customer balance summary that's this 300 right here and once again that's that's an adjusting entry we're going to make basically an adjusting entry to to uh, adjust the accounts receivable so if I go back up to the balance sheet and I take a look at this and we got this adjusting entry for the 300 right there so that's that's what's throwing off the difference it's another adjusting entry at the end of the time period and we're going to do that you'll see kind of why I'll close this back out again if we go to the customer balance detail this is like a negative receivable how can it be that this is a customer receivable they owe us money that's what this report means and it's negative that would mean we owe them money and we use, we used, we're going to use the accounts receivable to, to record deposits or prepayments uh, in, in a way that logistically works. But uh, it also results in this negative receivable and the need for an adjustment. So we'll see that in future presentations. Once again, when we get into like a deposit or a prepayment or unearned revenue kind of discussion, when we go through the practice problem and we will do adjusting entries related to it. So it's all gonna gonna make sense but those are those adjusting entries journal entries at the end of the period have to be done carefully because you can see they can have an impact on these reports we will then have reversing entries which will reverse the impact on these reports okay so then we're going to go back to the report center and so then we got the customer balance detail so the similar type of report but this time giving us the detail if i run this from 010121 to 123121 uh something went wrong there 1231 or let's say oh 22821 we have the same breakout but now we've got the detail in each of these items giving us the invoices and the payments 
uh, for each of those items, giving us that detail. And now we're down to the 14172 in this particular report. And if I go back to the balance sheet, we that ties out to the 14172 here. So that is good. Well, now we're going to go back to the report center and uh, unbilled job. You've got then job records, reports, and then the transaction list by customer reports. So that's going to be the, the basic kind of reports. One, the one that's probably going to be used the most often if you're tracking the receivables and trying to get paid on them is going to be the accounts receivable aging and the AR aging detail. You will also find similar information to those items in the customer center going to the, uh, the customer drop down customer center. And then you can, you can manage some of this information as well by looking at the balances that are currently outstanding in the customer center as well as the detail to that information. Uh, to the right if you're discussing something with a customer this is another area to go you can also find the open invoices by going to the transaction items searching for the invoices and then filtering by open invoices this is another common way to find similar information as to the reports we were looking at similar information that would basically be supporting what is being constructed on the major financial statement in the form of the accounts receivable balance